There's no reason to get your ANA or rheumatoid factor repeated. Have you heard that before? Have I said that before? Yes, yes, lots of times. But it's not entirely true. There are circumstances where repeating these blood tests makes sense, and that is the focus of our discussion today. The ANA and rheumatoid factor are usually the first screening test done when anyone or their doctor is suspicious for an autoimmune condition, and the results can lead us down all kinds of crazy roads. So we're gonna discuss the situations that warrant retesting, what information repeat testing can tell us, and how to approach these conversations with your doctor. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz, and this is Connected Rheumatology. Let's get started. So let's start with a situation that may sound familiar to you. You are having joint pain, a rash, and you feel more tired than you ever have before. Your doctor agrees that something's up and does either the ANA or rheumatoid factor test or both. They come back negative and everyone is relieved, except the symptoms don't go away. At what point do you go back to the tests and redo them? I'm not going to get into what the ANA or anti-nuclear antibody and the rheumatoid factor test are, as I suspect that if you landed on this video, you have a basic understanding of these autoantibodies. And if you don't, I've got tons of videos on those two tests that you can check out. But you likely know that the ANA is often used as a screening test for all things autoimmune, like lupus and Sjogren's, and the rheumatoid factor is associated with conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. These tests, however, are not without their limitations. Both tests can yield false positives and false negatives, confusing everyone involved and making it crucial to interpret results within the context of your symptoms and your medical history. If you find yourself in the all too common situation where an autoimmune condition has been crossed off the list because your ANA or your rheumatoid factor is negative, but you find yourself with months of persistent or even worsening symptoms, it may be time to go back to those labs and redo them. And so why am I saying that? Well, the truth is not every ANA or rheumatoid factor test is created equal. Different tests may use different methods for detecting the rheumatoid factor or the ANA, and some methods are more reliable than others. So it may be worth taking a closer look at the specific test you had done and making sure that it was the highest quality test possible. If it wasn't, then repeating the test via a different testing method may give you more information. Now, to do this, you will obviously need to discuss it with your doctor, which I'll get into how exactly to do that later. Now, let's talk about another situation that may need repeat testing. So let's say you have lupus or rheumatoid arthritis and you are under the care of a rheumatologist. Although I have told many patients there's no need to repeat the ANA or rheumatoid factor, I'd be lying if I didn't admit that sometimes, well, we need to. You see, in many with lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, the ANA and rheumatoid factor fluctuates with their disease, meaning when they have a lot of inflammation, the ANA and the rheumatoid factor go up and vice versa. However, this isn't particularly consistent amongst everyone with lupus or RA. And since we now have better markers like the double-stranded DNA antibody or inflammatory markers like the sedimentation rate or the CRP, we have largely abandoned using the ANA and rheumatoid factor. But even the so-called more specific markers can fail us sometimes. And although I will always, always, always default back to the person's symptoms, having some blood marker to hang our hat on makes us all feel more confident. So when you find that your flavor of lupus or RA doesn't follow the rules and your typical inflammation markers don't go up and down with how you are feeling, it may be worthwhile to start repeating the ANA or rheumatoid factor to see if these track with your symptoms. It can take some time time and repeated testing, but I have found it useful in a subset of patients. And one last kind of bonus reason to get your ANA in particular repeated, if you have lupus and you have been doing reasonably well 
It may be interesting to have your ANA repeated to see if it's gone negative. This is a known phenomenon in lupus, as many who achieve long-term remission are known to have their ANA disappear. Now, a negative ANA result does not significantly alter my opinion of how the patient is doing, if I could clearly see with my eyeballs that they're doing well. But it certainly provides reassurance and confidence that we can taper medications. But what happens if symptoms start coming back? Well, as anyone who has gone on the long journey to get a diagnosis can attest, it's often not so black and white even when you are known to have lupus. Symptoms could be related to fibromyalgia, thyroid or hormonal issues, or other types of arthritis. So what information will help you decipher if the symptoms are, in fact, your lupus coming back? Well, the ANA. If you felt great and your ANA had become negative, and now you feel cruddy and your ANA has come back positive, that's a strong piece of evidence that your lupus has come back and needs addressing. So I'm going to fully admit that having discussions about testing you want done isn't always the most comfortable. This is likely related to the overall relationship you have with your doctor, which is a larger conversation for another time. But suffice to say, some docs, well, they don't like being told what blood tests Test to order. If you fall in the negative result situation, it's important to realize that your doctor is running through a checklist of possible diagnoses and they have likely crossed off autoimmunity because your blood test came back negative. They have hopefully then pursued other possibilities and looked into other reasons why you may be having your symptoms. But if you aren't feeling better and you haven't landed on any answers, try saying something like, I'm grateful that you've been working working with me to try to find answers, but I'm frustrated that everything has led to a dead end. I know my autoantibodies were negative when we tested them, but every time I look up my symptoms, autoimmunity is always on the list. Is it possible I have seronegative disease or could my results have been a false negative? and would it be worthwhile to repeat those tests? This approach may prompt your doctor to evaluate the quality of the original test you had done and get them to think about doing more specific testing like the anti-double strand DNA or the anti-CCP. If you are seeing a rheumatologist and you find yourself at odds with them regarding how you're doing, Either you think you are doing worse than they think you are or the other way around. Having a discussion about what information each of you is using to make your respective assessments can be very illuminating. So for example, I may say that I think someone's doing well because their inflammatory markers are normal and I don't see any inflammation in their joints. Whereas my patient may say they don't think they are doing well at all because they still have substantial stiffness and body pain. Repeating the rheumatoid factor or the ANA and comparing it to the original results may be an important piece of information for both parties and help everyone understand what is really going on. So how could you suggest this if the doctor isn't suggesting it themselves? You could say something like, I appreciate that the blood work you have done doesn't show anything, but I'm still having a lot of symptoms that feel like my inflammation is really high. Is there any utility in repeating my ANA or rheumatoid factor and comparing it to when we first met? Could that provide us with some information that could maybe clear this up? Remember, these are conversation starters, meaning the goal is to open up a back and forth with your doctor that will ultimately get you answers and closer to feeling your best. And never forget that if the conversation never gets off the blocks, if you don't feel like you have a true partner, then go get yourself a second opinion. In rheumatology, I've learned you never say never and you always avoid saying always. As you can see, there is a lot of nuance and special circumstances when it comes to autoimmune conditions that isn't easily captured in quirky one-liners or clickbait headlines. If you like this, it really helps us get in front of more eyeballs and cut through the endless noise 
noise on the internet if you subscribe to this channel and like and share this video. I truly believe that everyone should be able to make their own decisions when it comes to their autoimmune care. But to confidently do that, we need to know all the information beyond the list of top 10 tips. I'm so grateful for your support and I'll see you next time.